All right, what a perfect day here in South Louisiana. Dead slick, flat, calm conditions. I'm at a bridge locals know as the Trestles. It's a train bridge that crosses Lake Pontchartrain. Just got here, water looks really good. Sun's not up yet. But my goal today is to catch some really nice speckled trout. Fingers crossed, hope it happens. All right, I got a real love-hate relationship with GoPros. On the one hand, I could never do my job without them, so I'm grateful for them. But they glitch so incredibly often. Can't tell you how much footage I've lost over the years due to camera problems. And I think I had a glitch <laughs> at my first stop, which was farther north on the Lake Pontchartrain trestle. But wasn't much to see. I just caught one fish fishing against that tide. And so I've run down farther south, planning to fish with the tide. The tide is falling pretty, pretty rapidly. It's a pretty good falling tide right now. But I really like being on this side of the bridge on a falling tide. The tide was definitely not this strong up north, not even close. Sometimes that tide is too swift to even fish the trestle. I'm not sure that's the case today, but it is rolling. Really important when that tide's swift like this to throw right up on those bridge stanchions. It's where you get most of your bites. Those fish are typically tucked up right behind there waiting to ambush prey. In case it didn't come out earlier, I'm throwing a shrimp creole matrix shad with a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. Water's about a five out of 10. Not that real pretty Lake Pontchartrain water you love to see. We had a big blow three or four days ago. Definitely uh, messed up this water. Too pretty a day and too many great options to catch fish to waste a bunch of time where they're not biting or where they're not even existing. All right, I came to a lake known as Lake Catherine. Locals know it well. It's typically productive in the fall, particularly when the weather's been like it's been, kind of just seasonal, not super cold, not super warm. I'm gonna make a quick pass, looking for some trout under corks. I've got this Versamax knocker on and beneath it, I've got a white shrimp ghost minnow that I fished a few weeks back with Captain Lane Zimmer. I had great success on this bait, really good fall bait. Oh, there's a fish. Let's go with the spot lock right here. You feel pretty nice, dude. Yes, you are, you're a keeper. That's for sure. All right. Good keeper trout. Man, he took it deep. Look at that, look at that. Good sign, good sign. Now this time of year, I kind of fish like my pants are on fire, particularly when conditions are this good because I just don't want to waste them. I know fish are feeding somewhere, I just gotta find them. Caught one fish in here on my second cast, then made a bunch of other casts, then haven't gotten a fish. That's telling me it's probably time to move on. It's just not a concentration here. Need to go find some better action. All right, let's do that, let's roll. All right, I've come into a bayou off the Wrigley's. Water here is not the best. It's really just okay. I think we've finally hit the bottom of this falling tide. It doesn't appear to be moving much at all in here. Water's way out. But I'm gonna see if I can make a quick pass in here and jig up a couple of speckled trout. If that doesn't work out, probably going to punt on trout and sneak into the marsh, trying to find some reds. With this low water, those fish should be concentrated. Well, they'll bite equally as well on that beginning of that rise. Ooh, that's a fish. There's a fish. That seems to be a red, unless it's a really nice trout. He hasn't come up. Nope, he's a red. Small red, but a keeper red. All right. Not as small as I thought he was. Let me spot lock us here. Let's check him first, make sure he's legal. Oh, easily. On the Shrimp Creole Matrix Shad, quarter ounce, nope, 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. The fish was right outside of this drain here. Really wish I could have been here when this tide was moving. <laughs> Might have caught a few fish. All right, unfortunately our tide has quit completely. So I've moved into a little skinny bayou, throwing this Red Fog Pro's Choice soft stick bait, trying to catch some red fish and maybe some bass. Nothing feeds well when this tide is dead but I like my chances better with the reds than the specs with a dead tide. So we just gotta wait it out. Be a good time to eat some lunch, but it's only 8.30, not lunchtime. This little bayou looks absolutely awesome. Four and a half feet of depth, even though we're at the bottom of a pretty significantly low tide. We should catch some fish in here once that tide starts moving. Lots of eelgrass, really pretty in here. 
Hopefully you can see that. That's eelgrass. It predominates in this area. Very fishy. Holds fish well. Always like seeing bayous with eelgrass. It's really easy to fish too, unlike some grasses. All right, I'm gonna throw this SP57 while I kind of wait for everything to wake up. This tide does appear to be trickling, at least starting to trickle. Starting to think about trickling. I got smoked by a beautiful bass. I saw him plain as day. Hit me way out here. That was a really nice fish. <laughs> well, that was interesting. My SB57 got a little fouled. So I was just kind of walking it in like a topwater and a bass came up and smoked it. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. That's a bass. Oh, come on, he's barely hooked. Don't go crazy, dude. There we go. All right, all right, good bass. Good keeper bass. Good bass to eat. Whoo, that fish is cold. That fish is cold. He only had this back hook, but he had it really well. All right, it's three hits on this bait. Oh, make that four. <laughs> now you'd think this red would be a color for the springtime, and it is. Works well in the spring. But it works equally well in the fall. I think this one's called, uh, is it Rayburn? Sam Rayburn Craw, something like that. Sam Rayburn Red. I don't know, something like that. But it's a good one. Oh, what? How did you miss that? How did you hit that hard and miss it? I'll give you another chance. Don't worry. I will give you another chance. There's a fish. That's another bass. <sighs> All right. Made a switch to the Holy Joy Matrix Shad. Made maybe one cast. I got this beautiful bass. Oh, shoot. I missed him. There's some fish right under this boat. Unfortunately, the wind is pushing us over here. I really kind of messed it up, really had no choice. I came in this way, made a cast here with the crankbait, got a hard hit, missed the fish. Went in here, saw a bunch of fish on that corner right there on the way in, figured I'd spook them. On the way back out, I spooked them again. So I made a cast here at the intersection of this three-way, caught that bass, just now missed another one. Definitely a few fish here, but the big UFO that I'm standing on has gone over this. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. But sometimes these fish are so fired up, it doesn't matter. Like those fish recollected off that point there, spooked them out of there twice. Definitely gonna let that settle down and see if they've returned. There he is, there he is. Ooh, speckled trout! Everything in these bayous today. Keeper trout, look at this, look at this. Keeper trout in the bayous along with the bass. Love to see it. Big, thick, wide fish. He's not all that long. He's probably about 13 or 14 inches. I'm gonna say 13, maybe 13 and a half, let's see. Oh. He's 13, beautiful, beautiful fish. Glad to have him. Getting quite a collection there. I'm heading 
to go deer hunting in Illinois tomorrow. So I need some fish to take up there with me and give it to some buddies. We kind of take eating fish for granted, but man, up there, they love it. All right, let's see if we can get a bite on that point. Can't really reach it too well. There we go, we got it. Yep, first cast, right away, a bass. They did recollect there. That was a long cast and a long retrieve. <laughs> and a delicious bass. <laughs> oh, hooked very well. All right, we had to do oral surgery on this guy. I would let him go because he's not all that big. But there's a 0% chance he lives, so at least make good use of his fillets. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you're probably wondering why I'm throwing this on a, oh shoot, on a spinning rod. Normally I'd be throwing a casting rod because I like the accuracy, being able to, you know, stop your cast where you want to. And the answer to that is because I'm, because I'm lazy. Is that a red? I think it's a red. No, it's a nice bass, a really nice bass. Spot lock right here. Yeah, that's a really nice bass for the marsh. That's a beautiful fish. That's a beautiful fish. Look at that. Just a really good bass. About as big as they get in this area. Pound and a half. That's it. Too much saltwater influence. Catch some big ones here and there, believe me, but this is a good fish. So I'll get back to my explanation. This morning, I started the trestle and on my casting rod, I've got a 3 8 ounce depth grip and that's just too much for fishing in here. Oh, there he is. There's a bass on our point again. They recollected. Good fish. If we don't mess that up, we might catch a limit there. Or we might not get another bite, who knows. Limit on marsh bass in Louisiana is 10 per angler. So much fun to catch. I really love these fish. And I tell you this, holy jolly matrix shad has been the bait the last few weeks for catching these fish. Redfish and speckle trout love it as well, obviously. There he is, same spot. Oh, he threw it. He threw the hook. You dirty dog. Hopefully I got your buddies inspired. I got one for them too. I spooked about 20 fish off that little corner right here. They were on the inside bend, which I generally don't like as much as outside bends, but that's where they were. There he is. Oh, another one threw it. They're just going crazy. All right, we're gonna move on, let this all settle down and see what else we can find. Oh, there's a fish, another bass. Threw it, boy, we're getting bad hook sets today. I'm gonna check this depth grip, but man, you know the hooks on these things are, yeah. Can't blame the hook. It's the angler. There we go. Another bass, another throw. Wow. I think that's four in a row. I think that's literally four fish in a row that have thrown the hook. That's incredible. That's terrible. <laughs> That's a very bad percentage. So when that repeatedly happens, it can be obviously a few things. Man, there's bass all through here. I see them everywhere. A lot of mullet as well, but man, a ton of bass. All sizes. But as I was saying, if you're losing a lot of fish, it could be a few things. Number one, they may not be hitting it, not really committing, just kind of tapping it, trying to kill it, but not taking it deep. Number two, you might have an issue with your hook. That's happened to me a lot. A lot of times you get a rolled hook point 
this one does not appear to be rolled i mean it's super sharp and number three which is frequently the culprit you got too heavy of a rod this rod is medium heavy power let's see if we get this one survived the first jump yep we got him we got him there's just fish all over in here it's incredible it's really incredible no, he was barely hooked, so that means they may not be committing. But that rod, as I mentioned, is medium heavy power. Possibly if I switch to a medium or even a medium light, I might land more. Well, I know I'd land more of these fish. The trade-off there is you do sacrifice some sensitivity. All right, we're coming back up to our three-way. Hopefully it's settled down by now. We're gonna take our time and go in here slowly. That was a false alarm. There we go. What are you, a bass? Are you ever come up? It could be a trout, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, nice trout, nice trout. There we go. He didn't jump at all. Good keeper trout. Who doesn't love this? <laughs> catching bass, catching redfish, catching keeper trout, all together. I know I love it. There he is. Another trout? Yep, another trout. All right. All right. Putting together a nice, beautiful box of fish. I'm gonna make some Illinois people happy. And hopefully I make an Illinois buck really, really unhappy. Ugh, sorry, dude. I won't be needing your gills anymore anyway. That trout really hit it hard. It was nice. These bass today haven't been tattooing the bait at all. Like you just kind of go to pick it up to hop it and feel resistance. Wind's picking up, not surprisingly. It's hard to get a day. This time of year, it stays calm all day. Now, every trout we've caught in this area has been just down current of this little three-way here. Not a coincidence. They're definitely eating whatever's coming out of this little... we got a major bayou here. Not major, but, you know, for this area, bigger bayou and then a much smaller bayou draining into it. And the trout have been right here. Bass been over here. Well, let me restate that. The bass have been absolutely everywhere. But if we catch something up here, it's a bass. Catch something over here, it's a trout. There he is. Another trout. Oh, he got free. First trout to get off. He was not a keeper. He was an undersized fish. So that's the one you want to lose. There he is. I bet it's a trout. I bet it's a trout. And it is. Yes, it is. And that pretty water. Probably the smallest of the day, but I'm betting, I'm betting he is 12 inches. He sure is. Get in the box, my brother. I could tell that was a trout just by how differently the trout are hitting relative to the bass. I'm actually feeling the trout hit. Doink. The bass, no doink. Doinkless, doink free, redoinkulous. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. I got plenty of fish for my trip to Illinois. I always kind of feel better about things when I leave the fish biting. They started a little slowly at the trestles, but definitely picked up as things moved along. All right, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please share it with somebody who you think also would enjoy it. And definitely give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Mass on.